Hello my friends, John LaRufa here with another Straight Up Solo. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at Twilight Inscription from a solo-only perspective. Let's dive deep into the game. Let's figure out whether it's got the mechanics, the theme, those kinds of things that you want to see in a solo, um, and how the AI plays so that hopefully you can figure out is this going to be a game that you want to own or one that you don't want to own from a solo perspective. All right, let's take a look. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as it greatly helps me out. So when I look at what you've got going here, we're, we're just a couple of turns into the game. I've made some um, expansions here. I've expanded out to these lanes over here on the navigation chart. I've unlocked this planet, started crossing off some stuff. I've done some industrial work over here in the in industry. Um Matt, and then I've also just deployed one of these um, special things because of my special guy. So when I um, unlock a planet, I get to put one of these Hell Titan, um, tri or whatever you want to call them, spacecrafts in here. And that'll help generate some strength for the uh, war aspect of the game. So every round, you're going to flip over a card. All right. When you flip the card over, it is going to say something, tell you what to do. In this case, it's a strategy card. So first you choose which board you're going to work on. Then you um, spend the re this resource on that board. You roll the dice and then you spend the dice. Okay, so it's very simple. So first I'm going to go ahead and resource the, let's do the industrial one. Okay, so we'll do that. Now, in the actually, no, you know what? I just changed my mind. We're going to do the Warfare one because we're getting deeper into the deck and we haven't really had uh, a big focus there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I can spend this green one anywhere. And I'm going to do that just by spending it right here. And it will allow me to cross off or get a point. The infantry is just a single dot and it's going to strengthen up this side. So my military strength now on this side will be one, two, three, four, five. The AI strength right now is four, so uh, this side is pretty good. This one's weak, so we're going to have to try to see if we can balance that out if we can. So we've taken that action. Now we're going to go ahead and roll these dice, all right? And the black dice are always available for you to use. The other dice, the colored ones, will um, do the AI work for us. And also, whoa, also... If I had the focus dice unlocked on the sheet I'm working with, I could also gain those. So he, or whatever you want to think about it, it, I don't know, it could be he, she, alien, what have you, uh, crosses off those three things. Really been pushing hard on these tracks. I haven't rolled any of the doubles on those. So we're, we're it's racing its way to this um, achievement over here at Mechatol Rex. And it's been really strengthening up its military and its voting power. So that's going to be tough for me to deal with. I have access now to two of these, uh, I don't remember what they're called, industrial resources, I believe, and then one of these influence resources. So I've got to use them on this sheet because that's the sheet I took. And with the two of those, um, I'm going to start crossing off for a bigger ship. I'm going to start crossing off for a cruiser here. So I start doing that. And then the blue one I can, or not the blue one, but the influence I can cross off for this PDS. So I'm trying to invest in these ships so that I can draw them here and hopefully strengthen my, uh, my war area before it's too late. So that's it. That was that full turn. Now we draw another card. This card says, this is a production one. So on these, only you do something. The AI does not. So it says claim um, one, trade good on industry for each unlocked trade good production that you have. Well, I've got two of them unlocked here, so I'm going to get two trade goods. And those basically work to allow you to use them as wilds for any of the three resources on any board you're using. So that might help um, with dealing with what's coming next. We'll see what's coming next. So again, the AI does nothing on those. All right, now we have this strategy card, which is heavy on the uh, construction or the... I don't know what you want to call them. I can't remember the, the, I'll just say the construction resources, the industrial resources, maybe. 
anyway, so I could go back here and start to place those where I need to do to be. And I think I'm going to do that because I have a feeling my war card is coming up soon. And I'm going to have to defend, or if I don't want to take the negatives, i got to have enough for the positives. So let's choose the war, or uh, the, yeah, the warfare um, side again. We're going to go ahead and we're going to mark this one off, which allows me to immediately uh, put a cruiser out there. We're going to put it right here. One, two, three. So now I've got a cruiser in play. Um, and then I'm going to cross two more off. Hopefully I can get another cruiser in play. All right, so now we roll for the uh, myself and the AI. There's some relief on some of them. So now he's going to put a spot on the expansion. He's going to put one here, and he's going to put one here. So no relief on the war. He's really, he's at a six and a four. That's going to be tough to deal with. But I have um, these three. I have the research, the influence, and the construction one of the industrial so what I'm going to do, and I can't build any of these yet because I haven't unlocked them, but I'm going to spend this over here to yet unlock another cruiser, and we're going to put it right here. Uh, yes, it'll be one, two, three. Okay, so now my strength is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is one more than him, which is good. And then on the other side, um, I still have a blue or I should say, I still have a research and I still have one of those influence ones. The influence ones I'm gonna use here to get a PDS. I'm gonna put that right here. One, two, three, unlocking that victory point for myself. So this side is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very strong, no problems. And I need to spend a green one. And I think what I'm gonna do there is do one of these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on this. It says, um, deploy two infantry. So per active sheet, every time you activate the sheet, you deploy two infantry. Each infantry must be adjacent to another unit and can be deployed be uh, below the deployment line. Hmm, interesting. Why would you want to deploy it below? I don't know, but um, I'm just going to cross that out. The good news is deploy two infantry, so that's a plus. Okay, so that's my turn on that one. Now we'll see what's coming up next. And we have a council event. So the council event is where the voting happens. And so what it does is it says claim one vote on the industrial, uh, on, on industry, pardon me, for each unlocked vote. And then you go ahead and we, we see what's going to happen here. So I'm going to claim, I've got, I start with two. I've got two more, so that gives me four votes. So I have four votes, and what happens in the solo is we flip this first card up, and we have two consequences. One will be a positive, and the other will be a negative. And you have to find ones that have the star on one side, doesn't matter which, followed by the opposite on the other, so no star. So what's going to happen is, depending on how much votes I spend, he gets to spend four votes, I have four votes, so chances are he's going to, what happens is he rolls a die and if he gets the industrial one, he sticks at four. He gets uh, the, the blue one, he goes to plus one and the green one plus two. So I'm probably going to lose this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to deal with um, probably the fail and save my votes for next time. So it says for the fail, it says on warfare, each player crosses out the asset above the strength box for one future war. If they win that war, they do not claim the asset. Okay, I can handle that. I'm gonna to have to handle that. So I'm not gonna commit anything. He's gonna commit all of his uh, votes right there. So he's done. And I'm gonna cross off this asset right here, which is the uh, dice asset to get an extra dice there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I still would like to unlock this one if I can win that side. Maybe I'll just focus all over here and give that one up for nothing. So that was on a future, um, yeah, above the strength box for one future war. So it could be anywhere, future war. Could have even been over here, but I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, so that's how that works. We're done with these agendas there for this. And you can now see that's how one of the ways that the AI interacts with you. All right, so we have another one here. This says a strategy card. It's this strategy card. We do it just like we did the other one. 
Um, so we're going to pick a sheet. We're going to spend those and then roll the dice. At this point, let's let me show you the um, the navigation sheet. So this is where you're going to be exploring different planets, and the blue lets you claim those explored systems. Well, I have. You can see the space lanes I've already put out here. I can claim a lot of different things. Uh, I'm going to go to actually going to claim this spot right here because I've explored there. So that gives me an opportunity to uh, spend another planet to unlock something, which I'll use later. And then I'm going to claim one of these little guys down here. And the reason being is then I can fill in this spot on my industrial chart and march my way forward, trying to get a little bit more down further on this. Now, remember I said I have those trade goods, which let me do um, other, I can use them as wilds. I'm going to use those right now. I'm going to spend both trade goods. And I'm going to claim two more things. So I'm going to actually claim this for two points at the end of the game and this planet to be able to unlock something else later with the planetary space. Okay, now we roll. All right, and so the AI crosses off this spot right here, this spot right here in the new area for that um, step, and then the C. So it did get to seven strength there, so we're going to have to deal with that. Now I've got three um, construction industrial resources, so those all get poured into an exploration. So I'm going to keep going deeper because I do need to get over to some of these things for the objective. So that's one, two, and it lets me get to there when I eventually get there. And three. We're going to do that. So I've spent my turn. There we go. Now, I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be a war card because I haven't had my war yet, and it's the second spot. So we'll do the war, and you'll see how that works. So we advance the deployment line, then resolve a war against each neighbor and using the sections immediately below the line. So we advance the line right here, which means now we're going to fight in these sections. Again, my strength is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this side and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. So his strength is seven. So we tie here, which means nothing happens, I believe. I'll have to look that up, but I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And here I win. So since I've won, I circle this and I have this asset now that I can spend. And this special technology could let me unlock one of these if I wanna spend it. So I can use the war suns, which are very big and helpful. I could also use that on any other board in either spot. So I could use it over here to unlock these goods, perhaps. Um, you can use it to unlock other upgrades. For instance, let's see if that shows up anywhere else. They're varied. So each of the boards is, I'm playing on the standard board side, but if you flip them over, they're all different. And there's a bunch of them. Here we go. So I could use them to un unlock these things and it would skip all this research and I would just get this special ability, which I think is really kind of cool how you can do that. So you can either go the slow boat or you can use your quick, I'll get it with this icon. So there we go. The war is done. And so I have circled here. I'll figure this out later when you tie. I don't know if you don't circle anything or if there's a special rule, but that is a full that's all that you see here, right? You've seen everything happen. You've seen these um, these take place. The, he now moves on to the next spot over here. Basically, what the AI is doing is it's it's racing down these tracks. If it gets to these spots, it will claim those spaces before you, effectively lowering your victory points when you do it. It um, gains strength uh, by the voting, the influence track, and by the war track over here, like you saw. Uh, but very easy to run. Now, a couple other things that um, you can do in this game besides, so you've seen the warfare mechanic, you saw the industrial where, you know, the more you cross off in here, the, the deeper you can get down here and get more wild cards and also score points. You saw a little bit of this where you uh, expand to get some different um, capabilities. Here, we didn't see what happens in our expansion board, but basically you're crossing these things off to make horizontal and vertical lines. And when you finish a line, you unlock a specific tech and you can't I shouldn't say tech, it's a, some kind of bonus. It depends on what it is. Sometimes they're population, sometimes they are other things like the specialties um, or the commodities, etc. And so this you can this is kind of where your population grows. So if you wanted to, you could try to you know get a lot of population on these planets and score points that way. So you're scoring points by maximizing your industrial tracks, winning wars, 
um, deploying ships, upping your population, or exploring key places, and then finally getting the goals faster than your opponent. And when you do that, you get the bigger points. If you get them later, you get the smaller points. Game ends when you exhaust this deck of cards. This deck of cards is the same every single time you play. The end game can happen either the second to last or the last round, depending. So it, it, it you don't exactly know when it's going to end. But all the cards, um, while they're in five different stages, the stages are shuffled up a little bit so you don't know exactly which ones are coming next. So that's it. Hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what we've got going on here. And now I will go ahead and tell you what I think about it. Okay, and there you have it. So hopefully that helped you understand kind of what you're getting into uh, with this game. So a couple of things that I'll share. First of all, I like these kind of games. I like roll and write games that give you different um, strategies to explore. And this one definitely does that. Because you can focus on different parts of the board, you can focus on different boards, you could try to get your points from, from maximizing th certain things or spreading things around. Um, you have an idea, since it's all sort of open information, about what, this, what the way the, or how the, the game is going to play out for you as far as, okay, this time I'm going to try these types of things to try to see how... Um, how I can score in that regard, or these types of things. Now, yes, the different cards come out in different orders, which change up. It's not like it's completely static or predictable, but you can work hard to try to do a strategy and avoid going in one direction or another, which I like. I like that kind of uh, roll and write game. I like that kind of game, period. So this one plays to me on that. Now, I've never played Twilight Imperium itself, so I really can't speak to how this feels compared to that, but I'm going to guess the theme here is pretty pasted on. I mean, plain and simple, you know, it is a, uh, you get some flavor text in the cards, but largely I stopped even reading that halfway through because it just doesn't matter to me. Um, and it wasn't really all that imp uh, compelling. I mean, I'm glad they put it on there, I suppose, but that didn't really do much. And then the other thing is, is that the only real, I'd say, thematic feel that you get is when you choose which, um, you know, faction or race or whatever it, you want to be. And they have a little backstory on that, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's good. So I could see what they tried to do is probably, you know, to, to base it into this universe. But I think that... It could have been any theme, right? It, it could have been any type of game. They had this license, so I'm sure they used it. Now, I will tell you that I bought it because I like the look of it. I like the look, and, the, you know, this looks really cool, right? So that theme appealed to me, even if it's just in the look of it. So I, I was fine with it, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure that whatever people enjoy about Twilight Imperium, they're going to say, oh, Twilight Inscription naturally feels like it scratches a similar itch or something of that um, ilk. It I don't think it does. I'm just going to guess. Because I've seen people play Twilight Imperium before, and, and I'm just not I'm not getting that from uh, <laughs> whatever I've seen, you know, built into this box. That being said, I really enjoyed this game. I had a great time with it. I'm looking forward to playing it again and again. Uh, after I finished my games of it, I, I find myself thinking about it, which is a good thing. I always like that. And I think it's very easy to play solo. As you saw, you're basically rolling those dice and just marking things off. There's just very little overhead, which is good. So you can spend most of your time doing uh, the focus of the game itself, you know, with, with what you're trying to get accomplished. And so I, I feel like this is the, that's the way to do a solo version of a game like this. You know, it's blocking the objectives. I shouldn't say it's even blocking, but it's just reducing those points. It's, um, you know, fighting back for the war value. It's making you think about how much you want to put into your votes. All that stuff makes sense because it is simulating the kind of experience you would get, uh, I'm sure, if you played with other people. That being said, I think this game is probably the best played with solo as far as I could tell. Now, I'm not going to play it with a lot of folks, but, you know, what are you going to be doing? You're just going to be waiting for people to take their turn. I, I, I don't know if that's really going to enhance the experience. I suppose, yes, you could, you know, decide uh, how much war you want to focus on, you know, with the other multiplayer people next to you, but you can see that already here. So I, I think it just replaces it. It makes it a very functioning and full game. Um, without really uh, having to do too much to distract you in that. So I really like that. 
If you like games where you get to unlock things and explore things and try different strategies uh, and have a little bit of tactical variation but have it much more strategic, I think this game is going to be for you. Uh, it also reminds me a lot of Hadrian's Wall because you kind of have that same type of feel. You, it, you, When you flip over the card, it will tell you what resources you have to work with. You're going to roll the dice. That, that gives you the variability, so you're not exactly sure what you're going to get. But you're going to focus on one thing. You're going to pick the spot on the board, and you're going you're gonna to aim for that, which is sort of what you do with Hadrian's Wall. You decide, I'm going to focus on these types, types of um of people or, or uh, citizens or whatever. I'm going to use that kind of track this time um, versus something else. And so I think that that's where I get it. It almost seems like this game may have been inspired a little bit by Hadrian's Wall. So anyway, I really like it, but it may not be for you. If you want something that's highly thematic, I'm not sure you're going to get there with this. If you want something that has uh, an AI interactive opponent that's going to be taking different actions and doing different things, you're definitely not going to get there with this. But if you like to do what I said, explore things, try things out, play a multiplayer solitaire game like this and, and get a full experience, I think this is the one for you. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. And whatever you play in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.